The war in Europe had already ended before the plutonium bomb was tested in New Mexico. Hitler had committed suicide in his Berlin bunker. Allied soldiers combed the ruins for his remains. The German survivors of the Battle of Berlin were marched through the shattered capital of the Third Reich. The red flag flew over the Reichstag. Allied scientific and intelligence teams searched Germany for evidence of Hitler's atomic weapons program. They discovered that only one reactor had been built, but it had not produced any material for a bomb. The most well-known German physicist and unofficial spokesman for the German nuclear effort was Karl Heisenberg. It has been suggested that Heisenberg subtly sabotaged the program to prevent Hitler getting the bomb. The Allies also played their part. The Norsk hydro plant in Norway made heavy water, a vital element in the atomic pile the Germans were building. The plant had been crippled by an Allied commando raid. The strategic bombing campaign against the Reich had also delayed the German atomic program. Hitler himself had lent the Allies a hand. From the moment the Nazis came to power in 1933, they sought to isolate Jews from German society. This led to outright persecution. Many leading scientists were driven into exile. Research and development were also held back by the chaos of the competing personal empires within the Nazi state. There had been 12 separate teams competing with each other to present Hitler with an atomic bomb. Small wonder that they failed. Hitler may have been denied the bomb, but he did have a weapon in his arsenal capable of inflicting nuclear devastation on Britain, the V-2 rocket. In 1943, Hitler and the Nazi propaganda machine issued a torrent of warnings that vengeance was about to burst over the heads of the Allies. In 1936, a rocket research establishment had been set up at Pinamunda on a remote island in the Baltic. It was run by General Walter Dornberger and a young scientist, Werner von Braun, the German equivalent of the Groves Oppenheimer team at Los Alamos. By the summer of 1943, work at Pinamunda was well advanced on the V-2 rocket and the V-1 flying bomb. The program had had its ups and its downs. At the end of August 1943, RAF Bomber Command raided Pinamunda. It was the only time that the full weight of Bomber Command was thrown against a single, small target. The bombers held up the V-2 program for two months and forced von Braun to move the manufacturing facility to an underground complex at Nordhausen in the Harz Mountains. It was not until September 1944 that the first V-2s were launched against Britain. 12-ton rocket running on alcohol and liquid oxygen was not a particularly accurate weapon. But London was a very big target. Over 500 fell in the London area, the last as late as March 1945, killing nearly 3,000 people. The V-2 was a terrifying weapon, but it was expensive to manufacture and carried only a one-ton warhead, no bigger than that of the V-1. Each V-2 cost 20 times more to build than the V-1. Mm -hmm. 
such a small payload could not justify the cost of developing and building the V-2. The 5,000 tons of high explosive which could be delivered by 5,000 V-2s seems puny compared with the 2 million tons of bombs dropped on Germany by Allied bombers. But was the V-2 intended as the delivery vehicle for something far more devastating than high explosive? The answer to this riddle may lie in a number of massive sites in northern France, crumbling reinforced concrete hulks whose purpose remains cloaked in mystery. The V-2 was transported on a vehicle which doubled as its launcher. It could be fired from almost any level piece of ground, making it very difficult to spot from the air. Northern France is dotted with simple V-2 sites, nothing more than a concrete hard standing near which the control vehicle was parked. But in the Pas de Calais region, there are several massive V-2 sites which were linked with sophisticated radar tracking stations. Some of them contained the first missile silos ever built. These complex sites were built in 1942 and 1943, possibly to house and arm a very special type of V-2, modified to carry a radiation weapon in its warhead, highly radioactive material derived from the German atom program which was mixed with fine sand. A rain of V-2s armed with this deadly cargo would airburst over southern England, turning its towns and farmland into an irradiated desert. Work was also going ahead on a long-range V-2, capable of reaching the eastern seaboard of the United States. Such a technical achievement would have been undermined by arming long-range rockets merely with conventional one-ton warheads. The memoirs of Werner von Braun are strangely silent about the complex sites in the Pas de Calais. At the end of the war, von Braun was scooped up by the US intelligence and later played a vital role in the American space program. Perhaps he decided not to compromise his good fortune by telling the world that he had planned to make Boston or New York uninhabitable. Time ran out for the Third Reich before Hitler's nuclear-armed rockets could be fired from their special sites in northern France. By September 1944, they had been overrun by the Allies. But there was one last twist to the story of Germany's atomic program. On the 25th of March, 1945, three weeks before the Red Army opened its offensive on Berlin, a large German mine-laying submarine set sail for Japan. She had an interesting cargo, a dismantled ME-262 jet fighter and several Japanese officers. Stored in her mine shafts were a number of heavy lead boxes containing radioactive material for the Japanese who had their own nuclear weapons program. One of the submarine's crew has claimed that the containers carried the label U-235. Uranium-235 is needed to trigger an explosive chain reaction. The war in Europe ended when the U-boat was only halfway across the Atlantic. Her captain surrendered to an Allied destroyer. The Japanese committed suicide rather than compromise their mission. According to the US authorities, 56 kilograms of uranium oxide were unloaded from the U-boat. But uranium oxide emits no radiation. It could be carried in a cardboard box. The Americans knew that the Japanese Navy had three specialized submarines, the largest in the world, each capable of carrying two catapult-launched aircraft with a bomb load of about 2,000 pounds. Standing off the coast of California, they could have launched their warplanes on a kamikaze mission to drop a radiation bomb on Los Angeles or San Francisco. The capture of the mine-laying U-boat seems to have put paid to this mission.